Okay, as mentioned, I'm going to be doing a presentation today. It's going to be about increasing membership. This is a really important topic. Many of our clubs are struggling with it, whether it be in District 60 or beyond. And even when you think about, I, I heard someone say earlier, active members, right? So members on paper doesn't mean they're always coming out. But I'm going to talk today about increasing membership overall. This is our agenda. Something that I think is really important to retain knowledge is to have interactive sessions. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to take about the first 15 minutes and actually go through my content. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because there's a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to talk about marketing, quality meetings, follow up and closing. The last two segments are going to take about half the time today. So about half an hour with breakout rooms and then sharing some of this. So I'm hopeful that you can all learn from each other as well throughout this um, meeting today. So the first thing that is really important, and when I look at increasing membership, I look at the full picture. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of different aspects but they're really important to focus on so that you will be able to increase your membership. And the first is fairly obvious, but it's marketing. It's something that's really, really critical to be doing. I'm breaking it out into community and corporate. I have experience with both kinds of clubs and they definitely have a different kind of marketing. So first up is for community clubs. There are a lot of different ways you can focus on this. First being, does the club have a website, right? That sounds pretty basic, but I know not every club has a website. It can tell people a lot more about your club, how to contact you, um, all that sort of stuff. The next two go in tandem together. One is Meetup, one is Eventbrite. They're both websites where people can search for events. Obviously at this point it's online. They can search for online events to do something different. So you can use both. You can use one or the other. I've heard mixed success from clubs, but I find that Meetup and Eventbrite can be very helpful to generating leads for people to actually come to your club. So it's really important to, to have your recurring events on there. Social media is really important. How are you utilizing that? I have seen a club um, that I was actually an area director for last year and they did a really good job of social media. They actually had a Facebook group for the entire members. They were actually really active in posting and you know they utilized that to get new members as well. But obviously there's other ways. There's LinkedIn, there's Instagram, there's Twitter. There's so many different ways. So there's different ways to think about it. It's, it's good to think about how you wanna utilize that. Something I think about with marketing is, is quality a lot. So some of these, you're just trying to get your name out there. But referrals and word of mouth are going to likely give you higher quality um, guests coming to your meeting. So keep that in mind. I know some clubs I've heard have done meetings where everyone tries to bring a guest if possible. I think that's a great idea. And finally, open houses. This is really important as well, but really making sure that the open houses have a really unique theme or a really unique agenda so that it will get people coming out um, to your club and learning more about it. Next up is corporate. So I'm actually part of a corporate club. I have been for four and a half years now. So I'm probably a little bit more versed in this area, but it is totally different. Most corporate clubs that I'm aware of are closed, meaning they're not gonna allow anyone else to join. They're, they only allow employees. Some are open, but um, this is more about closed clubs. So something that I think is important is to utilize your internal marketing or your communications department. I actually had a really great success story with this. Um, my company is all across Canada and the US. Uh, in the past, our Toastmasters Club was only in Toronto, which is our headquarters. Obviously when we were in person, that's the way it had to be. But now we've opened it up to every single location. It's helped dramatically. Sometimes the time zones are tough, obviously, but uh, we've gotten other people. So what we used is we worked with our internal marketing team to broadcast an email to our entire company. And the first heading of it was about Toastmasters. And I think within the first day, it, they had a, it had a link to our email address of our exec team. And we had, we had at least 20 people that emailed us in one day. 
asking about questions for Toastmasters. So this was a dramatic success and I, I highly recommend it if you're in a corporate environment. Um, something I've done is promoting Toastmasters in team meetings, whether that be your own team meeting, talking about your story, or going to going as a guest to other team meetings. That can be a great tool. Another thing is if you have any contacts within your HR team, try to get them to talk about it to new hires. A lot of times they're already talking to new hires about getting up to speed. So if you can get that included in some of that information, it's very relevant, of course. Everyone in any sort of company needs communication skills. So it's, I think that's really great and a really great idea. Again, referrals and word of mouth um, are always gonna be there. That's for every single kind of club. So that's an important thing to think about. Again, open houses. So something that we do in my company, in our corporate club, is we try for our open houses to have some sort of educational session so that people can learn a little bit more. There's canned presentations actually on the Toastmasters website, which is typically what we utilize. So it's not a lot of work for whoever's presenting. And people tend to get a lot of value out of that when they come to our open house. And finally, if you have any sort of intranet website, internal website, see if you can get anything posted there about your Toastmasters club. Um, so again, a little bit different when you're thinking about the corporate setting, but there are still a lot of ways you can uh, use marketing and increase membership. Quality meetings. This is something I think is really, really critical to increase your members. Because let's say you have 10 guests come from Meetup. If you don't have a quality meeting, you will not be able to convert them to a member. So again, this is why I look at things. I look at the full picture of this when I think about increasing membership. A lot of this um, comes from the moments of truth. This is um, on the Toastmasters website. So keep that in mind if you wanna look that up to get a really detailed document. But really thinking about first impressions, this is very different now in the online world, right? In person, it was very easy one-on-one -on -one to say hi to people as they were coming in. Now it's a lot more challenging. There can be 20, 30 people in the Zoom call, but really acknowledging people as they're coming into the meeting, especially by name, I think is really important, especially when they're a guest. Also, what makes your club unique? What's the culture of your club? Is it a fun environment? Is it a great way to learn? I actually went to a club recently uh, called Pitch Masters, and they actually have something unique I've never seen before, where the, people actually give a pitch and they get feedback right then and there on it. So for them, they can talk about that and say, okay, maybe if you're an entrepreneur or you're in sales, this could be a really good Toastmasters meeting for you to come to. Meeting roles filled ahead of the meeting date. Um, and speeches being completed every meeting. So I think this is important. It's not the end of the world, but it just looks a little bit disorganized to guess. I know sometimes it happens, I've been there, but if meeting rules aren't filled, guests may not get the best view of your club. And also making sure speeches are happening, at least one every single meeting, so that they really get that understanding of what a Toastmasters meeting is about. Do you have a mentorship program? I think this is something that's really important to call out because then you can tell people and tell guests, hey, if you decide to become a paid member with us, you get an opportunity to get mentored by somebody who's been in Toastmasters and is experienced. When you have that one-on-one -on -one connection, I think it makes a really big difference. I had already alluded to educational sessions. I think this is great. Obviously, you know, don't do it all the time, but just to have some more variety in your meetings, right? The more variety you have, especially with online meetings and how a lot of them can kind of feel the same, especially from a work context, I think it's important to, to spice up your meetings. And finally, how are achievements being recognized? Is it being recognized at the end of the meeting in club business? Are you saying, hey, this person finished a path or finished a level? Um, I think that's really critical. I know in my club, we have a, a team site where we recognize each other. So I think that's important, but it can also be incorporated into the meeting if there is time. So again, quality meetings are really a key portion of increasing members. The next, and this is really important, it may sound straightforward, but I've seen a lot of clubs that don't focus on as much as they could, and this is guest follow-up. So let's say you've had 10 guests come out. How are you following up with them? 
how is it being done and how quickly is it being done? I know in my club, um, it's a little bit easier because we already have everyone's contact information, but we try to follow up within the next 24 to 48 hours. We try not to leave it. We try to contact them while Toastmasters is fresh in their mind. I know I was coaching a community club last Toastmasters year. They actually had a really quick Google survey that they sent in the chat to all the guests so they could, they could get at least their email, their name, a bit more information about how they found the club. It's really good data to be able to have beyond just asking people for their contact information uh, in the chat. And how is this being tracked, right? Are you tracking this in a formal way of, of guests coming? Obviously, if you have some sort of survey, it's a lot easier to do so because you're able to pull those analytics. But that's something where potentially if you have guests that came out a year ago, you can follow up with them. You can actually follow up with them and see, hey, do you want to come out to our club again? We're having an open house or we're having a special event. That's something that I think is really important and really critical. I've been talking a lot about quality, but I think quality leads is something that's important to talk about. Obviously, marketing is critical, meetup, Eventbrite, all of these different ways to broadcast your name out there. But again, the success that I have had is when I have been able to invite someone that I personally know to the club and then have a follow-up conversation with them after. Because that's a quality lead. It's someone that I actually know really well. They know me. And it's much more likely that you're going to convert that person to a member. So that's why I talk about that idea earlier or, you know, have a meeting where everyone brings a guest or, you know, one or two guests because it's much more likely you'll actually be able to convert them to a member because they feel connected to that club. And then again, I know not every club is gonna get really into the data analytics here, but I think it's useful to look at your conversion rate. How many guests are you actually converting to members? Or again, are you tracking that? And also looking at where they're coming from too, right? Are they all coming from Meetup? Okay, maybe invest a bit more of your energy there and really making sure that that website is really great really attractive to people that are looking through meetup through all the different events that they have on there. So again, guest follow-up is very critical. And closing, I use this in kind of a sales term. I know some people like that, some people don't, but it is something to think about is this is like a sales motion. You are having that opportunity to convert a guest to a member. And again, at the end of the day, I'm sure many of you here, some maybe have been in Toastmasters for a short time, some for a long time, but you're not selling something if you really believe in it and it really makes a difference. For me, when I started Toastmasters, I could not do an introduction in a team meeting. It was really challenging for me. Obviously now I'm not at that point anymore. Um, so for me though, that's why it doesn't feel like any sort of sales. I'm just sharing my own personal experience. And I talk about that here, sharing your story has way more impact, right? Instead of sending a generic email about Toastmasters, it can help your public speaking and communication. Again, if you're able to say, hey, this is how it helped me, it's gonna resonate way more with whoever you're talking to. And it's even better if you can talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. So again, in my club, it's a bit easier because I'm able to actually, I have everyone's contact information already and I can follow up with them after. But one idea I saw done really, really well in a community club was I think they had a two hour meeting. They had what they called a networking break. In the middle of the meeting, it was about uh, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And what they would do is they would pair a member with a guest. So it was one-on-one -on -one conversation and they were able to really answer any questions they had about Toastmasters. They could talk about their own journey. They could talk about what it's like to, what are the differences between a guest and a member. And again, for people, especially that are really introverted, people that are coming out of Toastmasters that really need that help and support, they're not gonna ask a question when there's 30 people on a call, but they might ask it if they're one-on-one -on -one and talking to someone. So I think that was a really great idea that I saw done very well. And something else I think is critical is to get everyone involved at the club level and converting guest members. It is not only the VP of membership's job to be converting guests to members. Again, if you bring a guest, you know, are you chatting with them after to see what their experience was like, to answer any questions they might have? Um, I think it's critical, really, and, and this is how I treat it in my team, I'm the president of my club currently, is I think absolutely everyone on the executive team should know how to convert a guest to a member on the Toastmasters International website. 
because that means if they're talking to someone and they're interested, they don't have to reach out to the VP of membership and pass that person off. You can immediately convert them to a guest, uh, sorry, convert them into a paid member right away. So I think these things are really important so that you're actually able to get the, the new members that you're looking for. And we have a few membership campaigns with District 60 right now for those who aren't in our district. Um, unfortunately, this is not qualified for you. We actually have more than this now, but this is the one that I was aware of when I made this presentation. But if you, um, so for members who bring a guest and convert them to a member, they'll free, receive a free ebook. This is from January 1st to April 30th. And then May to June, um, the same sort of thing. Members who bring a guest and convert them to a member will receive an enthusiasm award ribbon. So I wanted to just highlight this because it's something the division is really, or so the district I should say, is really trying to do to increase members. And I think what's unique about this is normally incentives are not actually for individual members. So this is one of the few where members will be able to get an incentive if they're able to convert guests to members. More information is on the District 60 website. And I'm gonna stop sharing. That is actually it for my presentation. It's actually quite short because again, I really wanted the majority of this meeting to be everyone in breakout rooms, sharing how you've been able to convert guests to members. So what I'd like to take the next 15 minutes, Angela will be assigning you to a breakout room. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many we'll have to see once we- uh, we'll, we'll have about um, four to five people per breakout room. Okay, okay, awesome. So. What, what I will ask in the breakout room is A, if there's anything that you took away from this presentation that you think is really valuable, to chat about that a little bit more, but also everyone has different ideas. If you have ideas that have worked well at your club or something you've wanted to try, just chat about that more. So I think I really wanted this to be interactive from the perspective of sharing with each other, not just learning from me, but being able to learn from your fellow Toastmasters. So. I will um, pass it over to Angela if she wants to add anything before we go to break up. Okay, very good, um, uh, Carrie. Thank you. Uh, well, we we just had a good conversation about uh, all the different things that we've tried that haven't worked. We've noticed that we've had a lot of trouble with Meetup. Um, it seems like a good idea, but some some of us are not getting the the conversions that we don't have the guests actually showing up. So we tried to come up with what actually is working. And the best that, that we could come up with is making sure that it is a really good meeting when when someone does attend, then doing the, the job of following up with them to make sure that that guest has the best opportunity to become a member. And then if they do become a member, making sure that you attend to their needs by giving them a mentor uh, so that you don't lose them after you put all that, that effort into getting them into your club in the first place. Very good, yeah, good, good advice. And uh, room two, who's the representative for room two? I don't know, I don't know the numbers. To okay, be uh, room two would be Andrew's room, Andrew Horberry's room. Andrew, do you want to present? <laughs> yes, it was my room. <laughs> Well, we were, we were super lucky because we had Carrie as a, a really strong voice within the group um, and we had a number of other people from very varying clubs. Uh, so what I heard in that was that real agreement with Carrie on a number of the key points she made, such as make sure if you're a, if you're a closed club, a corporate club, actually, I, I, I want to say, we should never use the phrase closed club because it sounds like it's closed. It sounds like it's defunct. Um, a corporate or organizational club. If you're one of those, get hold of your HR department and make sure they are selling the benefits of joining your club because uh, A, that they'll do some of the work for you and B, it'll come with the authority of somebody else, not, not a strange person called a Toastmaster that somebody's never heard of. So there was that. Uh, really strong agreement with the idea of using the in-meeting survey or just connecting with guests somehow to grab some crucial details so you can follow up with those folks. Um, interesting thoughts, I think, about open house and, and some concern about how to market an open house, how to go out and find new guests to come into those. So we talked about a number of routes like member bringing members, um, issuing press releases, using every single social media channel you can lay your hands on, 
don't just rely on division calendar because that's really only seen by the uh, district calendar because that's really only mm. seen by people in the district. Uh, so you may get some existing Toastmasters and they might join a second club, but if you're after real new guests, you need to go outside. Um, what else did we hear? Oh yeah, being confident about making the offer to guests. I'm going to I'm going to resist saying uh, resist saying closing the sale because I hate closing. Uh, but just being confident about what the offer is, just saying, uh, if when you when you decide to join, here's what to do next. Here's the link to a membership form, and here's how much it costs to join. And I, I, I was very personally, I hate talking about money because it, it just smacks of sales. Um, but what we found was that you had to talk about the money. You had to be clear about how much it cost. And then that gives you some confidence to talk about what good value the offer of Toastmasters is. So I think there were many, many other points. It was a very robust conversation. Yes. I think those were the key ones. Yeah, all very good points. In terms of uh, marketing, press release, be confident on the offer, be clear on, on the cost. So uh, room three, that's the room with uh, Leticia Sanchez. Who would want to speak for that room? Alan and Martin. Nicole and Renee was also in that room. I'll speak. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so what we discuss in the club is that number one is that, um, so for, uh, it's a great, any event, even as Carrie was mentioning, it's having engaging meetings, any like even meetings are, will work to be published on social media and invite members to, to join the meeting, have an engaging meeting, and also encourage members to bring a guest uh, so they can get to see what, what those masters is about. Uh, it's a great, it's, we don't have to wait for an open house event to invite members or to publish um, what those masters is about. Uh, any event, including a meeting, a workshop, uh, and, and, and an open house, it's an event to be published everywhere and bring guests all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we learn in the in this event, and that uh, it, it's something that I could bring up to my to my clubs is encouraging them to use a break to have the, a guest in a breakout room with someone from the club it's something that probably um, i haven't seen in some of the clubs but it's a great benefit to 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 take from zoom and something else that the members also discussed is the challenge that we're currently facing with with zoom and the fact of not meeting in person. Uh, however, some of the clubs are working hard to bring guests. And also someone else mentioned about this, how in the corporate world, they are getting support from HR or from someone else on inviting, inviting members to join the club and why they should join. So that's what we discussed. In our, in our group. Yeah. yeah, very good, Lucia. What I got from your conversation is that engaging meetings, members bring guests, don't wait for an open house every meeting, make it vibrant so that uh, any guest that comes in will want to join. Uh, use breakout rooms one-on-one -on -one and HR for support. So the, uh, the next room is room four, and that's the room with uh, Adrian D'Souza, Karen, Lorna, Lynn and Shafali. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn can speak, I think we'll let Lynn do it. Thank you. I love being voluntold. <laughs> we had a really good conversation. Adrian talked a lot about Meetup and how it can bring guests in and people say the guests will join, but often it doesn't work and it can be expensive. And it depends on if it's district run or if it's your own club that has it. And one of the things that we found, I know I talked about that with my club, was that if only two people are engaged in actually going on to meet up and saying they're going to be there, guests who come only see the profiles of two people. And it's not very encouraging to think, well, why would I want to visit this club if there's only going to be two people there? And it was really difficult to get people to do that. 
we also talked about uh, Karen's in a situation where she's in a, a workplace. It's not a corporate club, but it's a workplace and how a lot of people would ask about the Toastmasters and they could put out flyers. One of the difficulties with the members that are already there is the fact that a lot of the women on Zoom aren't attending because with COVID and being at home and if they have children, they're so involved with the educational aspect that they just don't have time to take care of that. And I mentioned in my club that it's more men that aren't coming because they prefer the social aspect and and I didn't mention them, but they like to go for post toasties and that sort of thing. And just coming on to a, a meeting and sitting there and staring at a screen is not um, making them want to come out and participate in the meeting, but they say they will come, they still pay their dues and join, but that they don't want to particularly attend the meetings. And we had uh, Shafali was also talking about different aspects of Toastmasters and that I believe it was Shafali saying that they tried at their club to have some exciting things in the meeting and different things like quiz master and other things but there was a lot of kickback from members saying that they didn't want to try these things they liked the agenda I hope I'm saying what you said that they liked the agenda yeah. please step in if I'm not that they liked the agenda the way it was and did I miss anything Anyone wanted to add anything that I missed? Basically, it's just that it's a challenge during COVID for many different reasons and people have different reasons. And I find it also depends on whether it's a morning meeting, a noon hour meeting or an evening meeting and people's commitments for that type of thing as well. For me personally, I prefer the online meetings because I live in the Ottawa area and most of my meetings involve driving three quarters of an hour to an hour, often through snowstorms. And I often miss the winter meetings. So I actually prefer the online. A lot of people don't. One thing I will say though, we didn't talk about this. You get a lot more guests and members from other places. One of my so clubs, we have uh, members from Montreal, Ottawa, United States where this would never happen if we weren't on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have one thing thing to add to you that one person on group had members who moved to the United States but still didn't uh, stay with the group or stay connected. And I mentioned to you in my group, we have a person from Iran who's doing it from Iran and a person from England doing it. I saw somebody yesterday from the Philippines do it as well. And it kind of makes it easier to do the group if you have moved away because you just go on a computer and you can do it. And you don't have to take a plane or anything to, to get to the meeting room. Yeah, that's true. So with, um, you know, with Zoom and the pandemic, it, it in some ways it has connected us globally. Uh, in other ways, people find Zoom fatigue, but that's the challenge of making our meetings, you know, more fun and vibrant so that we can uh, attract those people as well. So our last room is uh, room five. Uh, that's the room with uh, Darwin and Evelyn Akua. Who would want to speak for that room? Uh, I, I can speak. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Um, I think most of us, everyone in that room are struggling to, to get new members. And that's what we all had in common. And we talked about mostly how to make the, the meetings more interesting and fun. Um, we talked about changing your background, especially um, the timer. Instead of like yellow cards, green cards and red cards, you make your background um, really fun. And Eveline had a lot of good ideas um, that she found from YouTube, how to make uh, table topics um, really interesting and fun. She talked about um, having a wheel with people's name on it and you spin it and that's how you get people to, to participate. And apparently there's a lot more. So if you're looking to make your table topics interesting, there's a lot of um, ideas in there. And I think we decided that that's what makes them come back when and they remember how fun that 
that um, Columbus instead of, you know, a boring regular meeting. And she found people um, to join the club because of those table topics that are, that are fun. So mm -hmm. that's what we talked about. Yes, uh, thanks, Darren. Yes, there are a lot of ways to make online meetings fun, you know, with fun backgrounds, with timing cards, wheel of names, as you mentioned, with the, the wheel, uh, cahoots is another one that people use. Mm -hmm. And also there are some software that can make your uh, fancy things flying in and out of your uh, Zoom background, which uh, makes it quite uh, appealing. Mm -hmm. So all that was is good. So th thanks for your uh, suggestions. So I think they are good that we can incorporate them. So at this point in time, um, we would want to, do you, you want to say anything else, Carrie, before we go to the... Um, the templates for the yeah i mean i just want to say everyone had amazing ideas i i love it when you get to talk to other people beyond just your club and get new ideas so hopefully people can take some of these ideas that other people are doing well and kind of incorporate that into your clubs for for increasing membership so thank you all for for coming out and sharing um i know angela was actually working on um some great documentation so i'll maybe let her for that. Okay, so one of the ways that we can attract clubs is the emails that we sent to them, right, to invite them back to our meetings and to invite them to our attend our meetings. So here are, here are some examples of emails that we found quite effective. So I'm just going to share it with you and we'll also pass it on uh, to, to yourself. So this is one in which um, I use for a new club that we're, uh, we're, we're chartering is that uh, email to guests inviting them to our club. So thank you for your interest uh, in our club, you know, inspiring woman. So it's, and then a description of the club, it provides um, a safe, supportive and positive learning experience, in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in self-confidence and, and growth. As a member, you will be with like-minded individuals that have a growth mindset to become better. Then we tell them about uh, how often we have our meetings and what the meeting format is. So uh, each meeting runs for just over an hour and followed by 12 minutes of networking in breakout rooms where you're able to mingle in a smaller group. So, you know, Carrie mentioned that one-on-one -on -one, uh, connection goes a long way where that one, one Toastmasters can mingle with the guests to uh, to tell their own story, personal story on what Toastmasters has helped them with in the professional um, and uh, personal life. And then uh, if you have a theme, a theme goes a long way. So the theme for our next meeting is New Year, New You. If you are interested, then you can register. One thing about Zoom and probably other uh, online applications that if you allow them to register, you, you're able to customize your registration. So you can ask them for their name, uh, their contact number, where they come from, perhaps, you know, how did they find out about your club. So this way you have all that information in there that you can gather and, and uh, mull over. So if, if the guest also had uh, interest, expressed interest about membership, you, there, you can also tell them about how, how to join as a member. Uh, in your email. So if you if they want to join as a member, you know, they get the following benefits. You can tell them that there's an online orientation session where you provide information so that they can make the most out of their membership. Uh, you, they'll be able to take on meeting roles to improve public speaking, impromptu speaking, evaluation, feedback, listening, leadership skills, have access to the Pathways educational program where they can develop uh, their, their at, at their own pace and have access to a club mentor, you know, should they require help with the projects or roles. And then one thing is to stress that all the skills learned are transferable to help them with their professional and personal development. And it has changed many lives, including your, your own, you know, my own. So this way you can, uh, they can relate that uh, to your own uh, story. 
So you can also attach information about um, the benefits of Toastmasters, the membership fee, you know, be uh, upright, as Andrew Horbury said, you know, be confident with, uh, with your ass on what the, the fee is. And then if they have any questions to connect with you and then leave it with a good, good tone, have a great weekend and take care. You can also have a poster, you know, of what your uh, next uh, meeting is to attract them. And then if you have any upcoming special events, <laughs> you can advertise that too in your, in your meeting to them. So to attract them to come back because, they, because of these uh, great workshops and events that, you're, that you have coming up. So after a guest has attended a meeting, you want to within 24 hours, as soon as possible, to thank them for attending. So you, you, so you send another email, you thank them for attending, for the interest in the club, and then you hope to see them next week. And then you can provide the link um, for the next week's meeting and also the theme for the meeting. And you, know, you can include all the posters that I had uh, previously for the upcoming events and for the next meeting. And if they show interest in joining the club, you can also mention all the same things that met, was mentioned in the initial email from them. So here's another example for an email to, to guests after attending a meeting. And this is uh, from Carrie. So, you know, we're honored to have you as a guest. So as president of Orange Nation, you want to invite them back. So this is for a corporate club, and but it can also apply for community clubs. Um, when you hold your meetings with what? And then with, uh, as a guest, you're you're invited to introduce yourself to participate. So tells them about, you know, how they are able to engage themselves in the meeting. And then we look, if you're looking for a fun way to improve your communication and build skills to help you with your career, we'd love to have you as an official Orange Nation Toastmasters member. Toastmasters allow you to engage with people who share similar interests to you in a supportive and comfortable setting. If you want more, you can click here for the digital package. And here's a few of the many benefits that you can uh, receive from, uh, from the club. So you can list them all here, in, you know, in, improve public spe uh, speaking, build leadership, gain confidence, working in network, personal mentoring, practice writing speeches and presenting, receive uh, regular feedback and constructive feedback. Uh, gain competitive advantage in the workplace, enjoy unlimited growth, maximize your potential access to Pathways Learning Experience, uh, which is an educational program that allows you uh, to leverage over 300 practical workplace skills, which includes interview, online meeting, leadership, project management, conflict resolution, and then and being clear on what the, the fee is. So for a corporate club, it could be Minimalized because you, you don't need to pay for team or Zoom, whereas the community club, you may have to do that, you know, if, um, if there isn't one to do that. So you want to leave them with a feel good that you can reach out to them, answer any questions and learn more, invite them back. And then what you can also put at the, in your email is, is this, uh, you know, Toastmasters has been voted by the community as the gold winner in the career training development uh, category by Toronto Star Reader's Choice. So this is a big deal. So if they see this, you know, that will also bring more uh, legitimacy in terms of uh, Toastmasters as uh, a valid uh, career training development uh, thing. So that is that um any if, any questions or comments before i move on to uh the checklist a uh, spreadsheet that you can use uh, with your own clubs okay nothing all right, all right so let me share this uh spreadsheet that to have so this is a spreadsheet that you can use is a, as a checklist for all the things that uh, carrie has talked about and uh, something more so each tab for each of the major categories. So for the corporate marketing, what I have the, is a description. If you're using that now, and also if you plan to implement what's in the description in your comments. So for uh, the corporate marketing, does your club leverage off your internal marketing, you know, uh, your company internet sites? 
Uh, perhaps you can provide a textual audio or video testimonies of how Toastmasters has benefited employees, have changed their lives, in, invite employees from diverse uh, geographical areas and time zones to join the club. Do you host special event meetings like open house guest speakers that is specific to the industry? Are senior managers or directors invited to give keynote speeches to drive the traffic? Have you considered opening the club to the community now that security is no longer a factor with online meetings for, for corporate clubs? No longer do you have people walking through your premise you know, where it could be a security risk, everyone is online. Then you have a, you know, that can increase your membership if you open it up. So does HR provide information on Toastmasters to new hires? Is Toastmasters part of the new employee orientation package? Is there a club representative to talk to new uh, employees during their orientation or new hire training? Does your club promote Toastmasters in team and departmental meetings? So. Uh, you know, with Toastmasters, here's another way to practice your communication skills by, by talking to different departments. Ask them for a few minutes and tell them about Toastmasters and how it can help them. So does the management promote Toastmasters? Are employees directed to Toastmasters to help with communication skills? Does managers incorporate Toastmasters accomplishment as part of the employee appraisal? So thus um, the training department incorporate Toastmasters of one of their training choices. Is Toastmasters even a part of the list of courses that employees can choose from? So do your members refer their colleagues to Toastmasters? And also if there's a membership drive campaign, some, something like a fun bring your coworker you know, contest. So for, for community, uh, a lot of the things uh, that Carrie mentioned, uh, um, a club well website. Do you have a club, uh, the, have, a, have you review your, your website of successful clubs and corporate ideas from other clubs? You know, we, we just finished uh, a contest, you know, and, and have the, the 10 best uh, clubs uh, website. And so you can, go through that and, and get some ideas and incorporate them in, in your own website. So is your club searchable on Google? Do you have a Google My Business listing? Do you use keywords to have people find you? So can your contact reach your club using TI's Find a Club interface? So uh, John Lurkin, a marketing of um, marketing communication from Toastmasters International indicated that when they survey, 63% have indicated that when they use Find a Club, no one has reached out to them. So there is a great opportunity. Are people actually uh, getting those people that are looking for your club? Or, or is your club information up to date so that they can find you and they can reach to that person that will be able to respond? So after... Um, uh, the club feature on TI website, since, since no one reached out, they had a campaign uh, to update the contact details. Now that number has been reduced to 35%. So there's still a lot of, uh, lot of room for improvement there for a TI Fine Club. I know that uh, in my own clubs, most of our members use TI Fine Club in order to contact us and, uh, and then having uh, an engaged person that can jump on it right away. You have accurate information there that they can contact, it'll be great. So it's, so it's a club contact information, correct? As I said, is the club contact available and to respond within a day? So that's, and then uh, recently, you know, a division director has, has uh, sent her contact information and find a club. She never got a response back. My own club, one of our, the members said that they joined our club because when they reached out to another club through Meetup, they never got a response back. So look into to see whoever is responsible for connecting to guests if they are able to, if, if they are responding to them in a timely uh, fashion, if, if at all. So does your, clan, does your club have a plan uh, to answer leads generated by this platform? Uh, does your club use Meetup to promote your club, uh, Eventbrite, social media, et cetera? Um, and then also for, for Facebook and social media, 
have your members repo repost the posts so that you can connect the content to their networks. So as you know, Carrie mentioned, refer to your friends, coworker, relatives, have open house and maybe some contests. Does your, does your club have an early bird uh, membership discount so that if they join by this date, you know, you can reduce the club portion of the fee. Of course, we always have to pay uh, on Toastmasters their portion, but we, maybe we can play around with the club portion of the fee uh, for those that uh, join early. Campaign drive, bring a friend, referrals, word of mouth goes a long way. So, you know, quality meeting, I'm not gonna go through all that, but guest interaction is very important, you know, mm -hmm. to greet your guests, make them feel welcome, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, engage them in table topics, feedback, you know, share your own story, uh, meeting contact is a, is a healthy uh, club culture. What makes it unique? Uh, is the meeting date optimal for most members? You know, if, if, if the dynamics change because of online meetings, does that meeting date and time make sense anymore? Do you need to change it to a different date or time? Are, are the meeting roles filled ahead of time? Do you send the agenda out? If the, do you provide scripts for members that are taking the role for the very first time? So that has very, you know, uh, an easy flowing meeting to give people a good impression. Are members following the Pathways Educational Program? Are speeches prepared every meeting? Do you have an educational session? Do you provide effective evaluation, meeting themes, and also fun, fun meetings, right? So people will want to look forward to coming to that meeting. Wear red for Valentine's Day, wear a costume for Halloween, dress up for the club's anniversary, have a debate uh, uh, event, many speeches such as uh, an evaluation or table topic uh, speech contest. A uh, one minute pe uh, a pitch like pitch match is done. You know, you, you pitch an idea and then you get feedback and you incorporate that, um, that feedback in your pitch again. So a summary of the meeting, one of the uh, corporate clubs said that they have really been able to drive their membership by providing a summary of the meetings for potential guests so that they will understand and see visually how a meeting flows like. So they, they were able to do that and that helps to drive their membership. So have you held a moment of truth? Uh, and also with the executives, do you reflect on each of your meetings and see what can be done better for the next one? So that it, uh, that's continuous improvement to get things done. Recognition, do you recognize your members' achievement? Do you present the Pathways Level Certificate uh, achievement to congratulate your member at your meeting? Are achievements mentioned in social media, corporate newspapers, you know? Uh, for corporate clubs, are the certificate of achievement sent to the employee's manager in HR? Are the certificate of achievement part of the employee's record? And also, do managers, are our managers invited to attend meeting to recognize personally and maybe hand, uh, virtually hand, in, hand their employee their, their uh, um, um, you know, certificate of achievement? So this this uh, boosts their morale and also will get other people going. Also, do you celebrate your, your club's achievement? Do you recognize your club's achievement towards being a distinguished club or, or working towards being one? And do you celebrate your club anniversary and other you know, anniversaries that uh, happen? So uh, then last is uh, you know, guest follow-up, which mentioned, is there a re so how quickly do you follow up with your guests? Same day, next day? You know, when I was VP of membership in, in my club, we get most of our, our, our contacts through uh, Toastmasters Find a Club. I try to follow, follow up with them, you know, within the same day. And then, you know, we started off with 13 members. At the end of the term, we got 40 members. So it's really important, that, you know, that you're able to engage them one-on-one -on -one and, and get them uh, know that you care about them. That one-on-one -on -one, uh, connection really goes a long way. So is the reason why they want to join uh, Toastmasters addressed? What's in it for them? What is, why do they want to come in the first place? You know, address that. Are they invited back? You know, do you send them the theme for the next meeting? Give them a, a list of special events for them to look forward to attending in the email as, I, as you saw in the template. Do you send them the agenda to the meeting? Do you send them reminders for the meeting via online apps or calendar notice? And are guest attendance tracked? Do you know uh, 
Uh, how do they know about your club? Are you getting quality leads? Are you spending your time pursuing the quality leads? You know, sometimes we have members coming, but they don't show too much interest. We, we might be spending a lot of time to get those people when they're not, when, when they're disengaged. Those quality leads are those leads in which they come to us, you know, like uh, Toastmasters Final Club. We know that they are interested in Toastmasters. Are we spending our time wisely to chase up those people that really are uh, looking into investing in their in their growth? So then also tracking the, the conversion rate for, for that. Um, so anyways, that is, uh, so th this will be uh, sent to you as, as well, and I can do that in the chat. So you can look at how in each of the tab, you know, what are you doing now? Yes or no? And also what resonates with you? What can you take action right away so that you, uh, you know, you can talk with your executive, with your members that you can do uh, right now uh, to help to increase uh, your club's um, vibrancy and, me and membership. So any, any comments, questions? I know, we're, I know we're a little bit over time at this point. So I know yes. probably many of us, I, I know I drop off myself. So um, I have included my email in the chat as well. Um, so if you have any questions, obviously I didn't really have time for a formal Q and A here because we had an interactive segment, but feel free to email me. I'm, I'm happy to, to connect with you and answer any questions, have a one-on-one -on -one chat because um, I'm really super passionate about this topic. So I'd love to, to connect with you. So thank you all. I don't know if Angela, if you want to say anything finally. Yeah, so thank you all uh, for attending. And, you know, we, we hope that with these tips that you will be able to, uh, to, to grow your clubs, you know, it's a, a critical time to, to do that. I know with the, you know, in some clubs are easier than, than others. So I, I have all your emails, you know, through the Zoom uh, link that you register in. So I will send you uh, the information for uh, the template as well as this spreadsheet so that you can use. So I, you know, I, I know it's late at 8.13. So if, if you want to drop, that's fine. If you have any questions, you want to stay behind, I'll be here for, um, for a little while longer. But Yeah, um, I have one comment. Because you keep making, uh, the, you pass on the idea that you know, it's hard to get the people's contact information. But now that we're virtual more and people have to put in like their name and email address to sign up to get the Zoom link, I think it's probably easier to get the contact information than maybe a person where somebody just shows up to a meeting randomly and attends the meeting. Yeah, that's right. Like, you know, with the Zoom, they have this, uh, if you have the Zoom Pro functionality you can uh when they register with that with that link you can ask customized questions such as you know how they found you their uh, they they need to enter their um, email address they also you know you can make some fields uh, mandatory some optional optional could be their telephone number mandatory could be from uh, where where they're from uh, you know, if, especially if you wanted to have a, a global community to, to connect. So, so that's, uh, so you have all your information there yeah. instead of having to chase them up, you know? Yeah. And for us, we always want to make sure that they have a first and last name. And then especially when we, we, we so when they come on the call that they have their first and last name listed properly when they sign in, just to make sure that we know they're legitimate and they're really here for the group. Yes. And so we really police that and we're going to make sure that, you know, that, that it's actually their name on there and that's actually a real person somebody who signed up. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So this will also chase you, save you from chasing them up or, or having to post, uh, you know, a survey at the end of your meeting, which not everyone may, may, um, may be filling up. If you do send this registration that has all these questions that you're looking for, you can get them there and make those, uh, some of those questions mandatory before. Yeah, the Eventbrite is especially is very good at that, I think. They're really good at Eventbrite. Yeah. So any, any other qu uh, questions, comments, or? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm trying to start this new club now um, called Inspiring Women. And 
last week when we had our open house, we had 18 non-Toastmasters uh, members that attended. And a lot of that was uh, from uh, TI's final uh, find a club website and also was through word of mouth some of our members you know we've asked them some of our core members and say spread the word through your 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 social media sites you know refer your friends your 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 neighbor etc one of the um, one of our speakers that was in the open house she invited three of her co-workers that can benefit and all three was uh, was interested in joining this week alone from the open house, I have four people uh, joining our club. So, you know, that one-to-one -one connection, using your network, having everyone connect to, a, to someone else, repost to your social media uh, uh, site when you advertise your club, all that is very useful uh, to get the word out, uh, to let them know that your club exists and to come. So, and then once, once they do come, then you, of course you wanna have a quality meeting engage your guests, make them feel welcome. If you, and then I, I try to picture, if I was a guest in this meeting, would I want to join this club? Am I being greeted? Do I feel, am I being uh, felt welcome? And am, am I being given the opportunity to interact in table topics so that I get a feel of, you know, the benefits of, of joining Toastmasters through impromptu, impromptu speaking uh, feels like. Am I being, uh, follow up on at the end. Um, so some of the clubs and what, what we do uh, for this club that I'm trying to uh, charter is after the meeting, we have, a, we have a networking session where we put people in breakout rooms for about two or three people each. And then make sure that there is a Toastmasters in each of these rooms so that if of these non-Toastmasters guests, many of them, this is the first time attending a Toastmasters meeting, that they understand you know, what the roles, how the roles play a part in their development. So we try to explain, you know, grammarian role, it's, it helps them to enhance their listening skills, you know, uh, table topics is their thinking on their feet skills and the practical implications that has in terms of job interviews, in terms of if they're asked to speak impromptly at an anniversary, at a wedding. So you we try to relate each segment of the, um, meeting to real world practical uh, things that they have, you know, uh, that, that they would, um, that, that they would acquire from that. And so that one-on-one -on -one connection is, is important. And in, in order to, to get the field, like two, two of the four people that are joining our club this week, it's, it's because I've been spending, you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time answering their, their emails promptly. Uh, you know, speaking to them. So that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, a personalization, just like service, you know, when you go to service your car or you do anything, and it's that one-on-one -on -one connection, that networking, a personal relationship that you've built, uh, you know, you've built over time with your mechanic or whoever, uh, goes a long way for you to go back to that person as opposed to some other mechanic that might even be a little bit better than them. So, you know, so that's uh, important. And, you know, as VP of membership or president, you can't do it alone. You need to have that mindset that, as, as was mentioned, have everybody engage in, in membership building because everyone uh, can talk to them on one-on-one. -on -one. You can't be everywhere um, at, at the same time. So have, have, your, uh, have your members having that culture, educating them on what to say, um, you know, in terms of, uh, the value of Toastmasters, you know, if they inquire about uh, a membership fees, everyone knows what the membership fee is so that they can pass on the application to them immediately if they do ask for, for that type of thing. So, you know, so, so those are, are, the, are, are, are what we find, you know, useful. Use your network, you know, to spread the word out so that they will come. Use your network. So any, any other further feedback or comments? Now for me, it was a great session and thank you for hosting this. Yeah, thank you, Dwayne, for coming and all of you for coming. And then I'll, uh, I'll send it out tonight, um, the, um, the spreadsheet, the checklist spreadsheet, as well as the, the email templates that, that was shown. Okay, okay. so...
good luck with your membership growth. You know, Thank I think you. a lot of the things are out there already. We just need to capitalize on it. You know, we, mm -hmm. we just need, and then, you know, it's, it's important to have a very good um, person to follow up on emails mm -hmm. coming in. You know, mm -hmm. some clubs, it goes through this black hole and, and, and you lose a lot of guests that way. You know, they're, they're maybe coming through, but no one's following up on them. Is your club central website up to date, you know, with, with your uh, uh, contact information? Is whoever is following your VP of, of membership, are they able to follow up within the same day? If not, maybe someone else should be, you know, doing that follow up job. As, as opposed to that person that doesn't have the, the time to do that, you know, and, and that email going out. So, you know, timely, timely follow-up is, is important. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much for attending this session. And I hope that uh, you, you get a lot from it and uh, all the best uh, with your club and your membership growth. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.